Hi, good day. Welcome back to our class in Chemistry Laboratory. Today, I will be performing and demonstrating to you the activity on hydrates and hardness in water. Now, what do we mean by hydrates? Hydrates are salts or substances which contains water molecules. And the hardness in water is due to the presence of the calcium and magnesium salts like chlorides and carbonates. For the first part of the activity, we are going to perform first about the hydrates. The first of these hydrates is the copper sulfate pentahydrate. Now, this copper sulfate pentahydrate is commonly known as the blue vitriol. We are going to heat this substance with the use of the Bunsen burner. So let us place this copric sulfate pentahydrate into the test tube and we are going to heat this. I want you to take note what is the color of the original copric sulfate pentahydrate before it is being heated. Take note, but it's being released. Observe what happens. This is now copic sulfate pentahydrate after heating. The next is we are going to heat the sodium sulfate decahydrate, which is known as the Glober salt. I want you to take note of the sodium sulfate decahydrate before it is being heated. Then let's hit this over the flame and kindly observe what is being issued out when it is heated. Kindly observe the sodium sulfate decahydrate after heating. The next procedure is we are going to expose the anhydrous zinc sulfate into the atmosphere. This is the zinc sulfate and we will expose this to the air or to the atmosphere for some time and we will observe that later. Another procedure is 
we are going to expose that hydrous calcium chloride to the atmosphere. This is the anhydrous calcium chloride. We will expose this to the air for some time. Before we are going to make the observations on the anhydrous calcium chloride and the zinc sulfate, let us proceed to the next part of the activity. Let's go to the hardness of water. Now, to prove the hardness of water, we will perform the following procedures. Number one, let us first have the soft water. Now, this soft water that we are going to use is the distilled water. We will get 10 ml of the distilled water and we are going to add 1% of soap solution into it. To this tiny amount of water, we are going to add soap solution drop by drop. Okay, let's okay. Let's add more drops of the soap solution until a good ladder is formed. A good ladder is measured or determined when that ladder will not pop off or pop out or burst out within one minute. So there are already bubbles formed on top of the liquid part, and let's take the time for one minute to determine whether these bubbles will not be bursted out. Okay, one minute had passed and try to observe what happens to the bubbles. Are they bursted out? So this is already a good ladder. Then we will use a tap water to compare the formation of ladder with that of the distilled water. So let's get 10 ml of the tap water. This is the tap water and we are going to add this with the uh, soap solution. That's one. Okay, there are already bubbles formed on top of the liquid part and let us try to observe whether these bubbles will not be bursted out for at least one minute. And one minute had passed. The bubbles are not bursted out. So this is already considered a good ladder. When you are going to compare the two, take note. In order to form the good ladder with the use of the distilled water, I only used 
10 drops of the soap solution. With the use of the tap water, I place 20 drops of the soap solution in order to form a good lather. Another procedure to prove the temporary hardness of water is this boiled water, we're going to filter it and from the filtrate, we're going to treat it with the soap solution. Okay, after filtering the boiled water, I want you to observe what is the substance deposited here on the filter paper. So if you can see, we have filtered out this substance from the tap water. So you can observe that we have removed out this substance after boiling the tap water then filter it. Now with this boiled water of course we are going to cool this first before we are going to proceed with the procedure. From this boiled tap water, let us get 10 ml of it. Then we are going to add drop by drop the soap solution. One, two, three. Until we can form a good lather. So it starts to form bubbles now and let us try to take the time whether these bubbles will be bursted out after one minute or not. Okay, one minute had passed and the bubbles are not bursted out. In this case, I used 14 drops of the soap solution. So you can now compare the three test tubes containing the distilled water with the soap solution, the tap water with the soap solution, the boiled tap water with the soap solution. Then let's go to the permanent hardness in water. We are asked here to get 10 ml of the calcium chloride solution and add soap solution drop by drop into it until a good lather is formed. This is the calcium chloride solution. And onto it, we are going to add drop by drop this soap solution. 
until a good ladder is formed. There are already bubbles formed on top of the liquid part and let us try to take note whether these bubbles will be bursted out within one minute or not. Okay, one minute had passed and the bubbles are not bursted out. So this means this is already a good ladder. If you're going to compare the four, I want you to observe which of them required a lot of soap solution in order to bubble it. Or in order to form a good ladder. For the last part of the experiment, let us have the laddering performance of the soap and the detergent. So to each of the 10 ml distilled water and 10 ml of the calcium chloride. To 10 ml of the distilled water, let us put drops of soap solution. And also another 10 ml of the distilled water, we will add drops of detergent. Let us try to observe their laddering performance. So, distilled water. So, this is the distilled water. And we will get the calcium chloride. To each of these two test tubes, we are going to add the soap solution and to the other one, the detergent. Take note of their laddering effect. So I added 10 drops of the soap solution into this test tube. And to this other test tube containing the distilled water, I'm going to add 10 drops of detergent. Observe. To this test tube containing the distilled water, I added 10 drops of soap solution. To this other test tube containing the distilled water, I added 10 drops of the detergent solution. Compare. Observe and compare. Which of the two formed a good letter? Then to these two test tubes, I'm going to add soap solution to one and the other one, the detergent solution. These test tubes contain the calcium chloride solution. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And to the other one, I'm going to add the detergent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take note. To this test tube, I added the soap solution. 
And to this test tube, which contains also the calcium chloride solution, I added the detergent solution. Compare the results. Observe and compare. Okay. And I want you to compare that with the previous test tubes containing the distilled water with a soap solution and the detergent. And the other one, these two contains the calcium chloride solution. One is having the soap solution and the other one has a detergent solution. Compare. A while ago, we exposed this anhydrous calcium chloride and the zinc sulfate. After exposing it for some time, I would like you to observe what happens. This is the anhydrous calcium chloride, which has been exposed for some time. And this is the zinc sulfate, which has been exposed for some time. Observe what happens. So after I have done and demonstrated to you the activity on hydrates and hardness in water, what I would like you to do is you are going to make all the observations, write them in your answer sheet, as well as answer all the questions given in the lab guide for this particular activity. Kindly pass your work or your output next week. That would be all for today. This is your teacher, Professor Resitas Ruiz of Holy Name University.